People ask me who I am and I'm like, God knows. Hey guys, uh, I'm here today to answer all of your questions that you've been asking on Instagram and under my videos in YouTube. It's not that many questions, but one of the questions is quite big. I mean, the topic that I will talk about is quite big. So uh, it's about my university experience and I will talk about it like later in the video. And first I will take a small questions. I will uh, just start straight away with the question number one. And uh, the question was uh, from Milena. <laughs> Who is your bestest friend in the whole world? <laughs> and the answer is the person who asked this question is the best, the bestest friend in the whole world. The question number two: uh, Which Bulgarian friend do you love the most? Everyone knows this answer, and now I will say the name: Milena. M I L E N A. Okay, I will move on to other questions and that was from uh, Elitza, I hope I'm pronouncing correctly and she asked can you please tell me a friendship with Milena with one word honestly for me it's like a pureness like yeah pureness because uh, when I became friends with Milena I think I already like talked about that but still um, in our like friendship we always say things straight to our faces it's pretty important for for you guys to tell your best friends or people who are close to you uh, the truth because otherwise some other people can tell them the same truth but in a really really bad way so I am and Milena as well we're trying to say bad things to each other I mean not bad things but like for example I did something bad or she did something bad and I'm like okay Milena this is not correct but you know when she's saying that to me or I am saying that to her we're accepting the criticism uh, from each other in a really good way so the, the word is pureness because yeah our friendship is quite pure what I mean pure is that oh is it is it correct to say pure it's not poor it's not poor it's just like it's easy going and like uh, we're uh, we're not pretending to be someone else when we're together we will move on to the third question and uh, that was from Borislav I hope I'm pronouncing correctly I'm sorry if I'm not and he asked have you been in Bulgaria what is your opinion about uh, Mike and Patrick <laughs> and if you could would you still am Amelie and Brian well, the first question that he asked, have you been in Bulgaria? No, unfortunately, I haven't been in Bulgaria. And I think there is one more question about Bulgaria later. Um, but I'm planning to visit. I need a visa for that. So I will figure out how to apply and I will apply and I will go. And the second question, uh, what is your opinion about Mike and Patrick? Well, if you ask Mike and Patrick, I guess they're really good brothers. That's what I like the first thing that came to my mind. And the last question, if you could, would you still Amelie and Brian? Of course. <laughs> of course I would. Uh, sorry, Milena. <laughs> but they're so sweet, both of them, and I love them so much that of course I would steal them. Move on to the to another question. Um, oh yeah, uh, the question was from Just Shami. She, I think it's she. What do you think about Bulgaria and our culture? I didn't know before I met Milena anything about Bulgaria. So to be honest, uh, but when I became friends with Milena, I started like to know more about the culture, and I realized that our cultures are quite similar. I mean, my Azerbaijan culture and Bulgarian culture because of the links between Turkey and Bulgaria and Russia and Bulgaria because like our uh, alphabet are the same so we can understand our uh, like uh, language uh, so when she speaks I can understand some words and when I speak she understands some words and um, also uh, another thing is that uh, in Bulgarian there is also like uh, some words from Turkey 
and since I also speak Azeri which is really really close to Turkish it's like Swedish and Norwegian I understand also more in Bulgarian because of that for example uh, Jorab is like the you know the socks and uh, Jorab is like in Azeri the same socks or Chanta is like the back and then uh, in Azeri is also Chanta is like the back so I, there is a lot of similar words in Azerbaijan both in Azerbaijan language and Russian that are similar with Bulgarian uh, the songs uh, the music it's kind of remind me of Turkish songs but not exactly the same so anyways I love it because we also listen to a lot of Turkish songs and that's why I really love the Bulgarian songs unfortunately I cannot say more because I haven't been in the country and I really can say about the country before I visited because um, it's quite easy to say now for me to talk about Swedish culture because I know a lot of things since I lived here for six years but so far I really, really love it and I feel that it's really close to my heart even though it's not my culture or it's not my country but I feel really really close to you and uh, to you because many of my subscribers are from Bulgaria so that's what I'm saying to you moving on to the next question is uh, <laughs> Uh, Feruza, she asked where is Ilkin? Ilkin is my husband if someone doesn't know or if someone is new to my channel and when uh, when are you coming back to Kazakhstan? well the second question was a joke but uh, we're actually planning to come back to Kazakhstan one day uh, and Ilkin is making joke because every time when I'm like crying that in Sweden it's really cold and he's like okay let me bring you to Astana in January because it's like minus 40, minus 50 sometimes, so... Uh, where is Ilkin? Ilkin is working currently in and living in Dubai and he will be there probably 2021, so it's gonna be like three years. Uh, Maria asked me, she, no, she said that you listen more to Turkish songs than Russian. Why is that? Well, the, the, the answer is that we're not listening to more Turkish songs or it depends on the person. Yeah, so for example, my generation will listen uh, I can't say more Russian or more Turkish. It's like my playlist, let's say me, okay, example me. My playlist is full of every single language. I mean, I can listen songs from Turkish, like Tarkan or uh, Arafet or Roman. Or, and then I also uh, like listen to so many Russian singers, like I love them so much. So for me, I listen more for Russian uh, than Turkish songs, but I still listen to Turkish songs. And, uh, if we take like a Azeri speaking person, probably he would listen more to Turkish songs than Russian songs but in general like if you took the majority people it's like half half like you can say one is like we are listening more to Turkish or Russian it's like both moving on to the biggest question of this video there was a question about what was my speciality in university but since uh, it was not only one person who asked there was Laura who asked um, uh, about university and my speciality in university but there was also private questions from my uh, Instagram subscribers uh, what you were studying and how did you end up in Sweden so just I will try to make it short and clear for you guys going back to 2010 when I finished my school I entered to university in Baku, uh, Oil Academy at that time, now they changed name. I entered to the Chemistry Engineering Faculty and after one year I realized that I won't be able to study there, well, for some reasons, uh, and I didn't like the subject kind of like I felt like it's not really really for me in 2011 I uh, applied for actually in 2010 I applied for Swedish universities but they didn't take me because I didn't have grades in January from school because I didn't finish school logically that's why I uh, tried again and um, I applied to Swedish universities apply for Stockholm uh, for Lund for uh, Göteborg, Göteborg. Gothenburg, sorry in English it's Gothenburg. That year when I applied uh, it was a new rule that the first university that you're writing you're gonna enter to this university. So uh, I first wrote the Lund so I entered to Lund University and the main question that people ask me why Sweden? 
it's easy because my grandmother and my aunt and my uncle they live here and so my mom wasn't was really scared to send me away to like another country at least she's like okay Stockholm you have your grandmother there but since I wrote Lund first I was like uh, anyways far away from Stockholm it's like five hours from Stockholm and uh, to enter university I needed a school grade and I did IELTS uh, if someone doesn't know it's like an English test and you needed I I think that was that time it was six uh, it's like from usually it's like either five five it was five five or six or more or now I think it's minimum six you have to get into in order to get to the university in Sweden but it depends again which faculty and which program and which university I prepared all the documents and I applied and I got uh, in into Lund University studied there for three years I studied development studies this program is about everything and about nothing at the same time it's like I learned a lot I, I will be honest I learned a lot about the world and about the development programs and it was about uh, developing countries but we were studying mainly about Africa uh, Latin America about the Millennium Development Goals about UN and all of this kind of things uh, that was on the first year on the second year we had to choose our major and we could take minor courses so I took sociology as my major and as a minor I took economic history yeah, and then my favorite courses uh, in the second year was uh, gender studies I really loved it I that was the only courses throughout three years that I really enjoyed and I really went home and I was reading like these the books and it was about the Scandinavian women and it was just amazing uh, third year I did internship I did internship in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Azerbaijan and uh, in Baku and I did it in UNESCO speaking through all my internships and my volunteering work that was the only one I didn't like because in the ministry uh, there is like a really strict dress code like you cannot wear skirt which is like one centimeter like over the knee or um, you cannot wear a printed uh, shirt or something it was so strict for me after Sweden when like people come to work with jeans and t-shirts and uh, the rest of the year we were uh, writing our thesis and actually I wrote my thesis about gender so yeah I wrote about um, gender inequality in Baku after the fall of the Soviet Union in 2014 I graduated uh, yeah, I took a year gap because I didn't know what to do with my life after development studies because as I said we learned everything and we learned nothing so I was thinking maybe it's better to find one specific like it, for example sociology since it was my major and go and study sociology in my masters and then be a sociologist but then later because I took one year gap uh, and I was learning Swedish and I was uh, uh, like working in uh, some sushi place in, in the Stockholm in Stockholm and I, I moved to Stockholm I forgot to say that in 2014 slash 15 I was still by the way studying in my Azerbaijan University since it was distance I could manage to do both at the same time so when I was studying in Lund I was uh, like every uh, January and June I was traveling back to Azerbaijan and I was doing my exams and then I was coming back so it was perfect because when we had like holidays here I was studying there and vice versa 2015 um, I went back to Baku in 2014 slash 2015 I got a job in uh, European Games and if someone doesn't know European the first European Games were in Baku and that was the time when I met Ilkin my husband and so I stayed there until uh, August but while I was there I was also looking for programs because I really wanted to do masters and I found one but it was also like a huge program like it's it was nothing about speciality at, like at least in my bachelor I had a major in my masters I don't have major people ask me who I am and I'm like God knows like I was studying I can say what kind of program I studied but God knows who I am but now I will explain where I can work uh, usually what I say to people is where I can work but I realize that I don't want to work there and you will know why in just one minute 
the program that I applied is called Master of Arts in Euroculture. Why I applied there is that uh, the reason behind that. First of all, it was interesting because um, in my bachelor's, I didn't learn a lot about Europe. So this program was really focusing on Europe and EU. I really love it. And I don't regret that I started both of these programs, even though they didn't made me like a professional in one field. Anyways, but going back to uh, masters. Uh, so the, f the thing that I liked in this program and why I applied, it was that one semester is obligatory to go abroad. Why? Because this program is like a dual master program, so you will get both diplomas at the same time. So I, will, I got the diploma from Uppsala University, I was studying in Uppsala because there was a program in Uppsala, but Stockholm and Uppsala is pretty close, it's like one hour away. From my home it's two hours away. So the first semester yeah, I spent in Uppsala, I was crying every day, it was super hard for me. We had a teacher from US and he was giving us lots of shit to read, lots. like. One time he gave us three articles to read, uh, which each was like 30 pages, plus the book to read until the next class. Um, it was a time to select your university. So um, this program had like eight universities that you could choose from. Uh, so one was Uppsala, one was Udine in Italy, uh, almost in uh, um, Czech Republic, uh, De Usto Bilbao in Spain, and it was uh, Strasbourg um, and also what else? Huh, I forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah, Groningen. Uh, Groningen in Netherlands. And I skipped some of them now. Uh, Göttingen in Germany. I, my first choice was uh, Groningen because I knew that in Netherlands the education system is really strong, even stronger than in Sweden. So I was like, okay, I will do it. I always like uh, looking for uh, challenges for me to grow. So I applied for Groningen first and then the second choice was Spain. So my heart chose Spain and my brain chose Groningen. At the end, it was so many people who applied for Groningen, so they used those who wrote something in the second choice um, and uh, since I wrote like Spain and it was not so many people who wanted to go to Spain uh, they said that I will go to Spain but at one point I was so happy because it was a choice of my heart and I was really happy there the system education system is completely different from Swedish and I prefer more Sp Spanish one rather than Swedish I will explain now why in, in Sweden uh, you don't have so many classes but you have to spend so much time studying alone like reading writing and all of those things in spain we had so many classes but with so, like i love listening to others speaking so when i went to the lectures i i learned more than when i was studying at home and reading because at one point you're just tired you can't you don't understand after like 300 pages that you read during the whole night you're tired and you don't accept any more information but in the lecture they like squeeze all of the important information and then they give you and then you go home and read just like 15 pages to just you know, so information will be stuck in your head. I spent five months in Bilbao. I really traveled a lot in Spain. I'm really sad because I didn't start my channel that time. And if no one uh, heard about, well, I mean, you heard, but if you've never been and you don't want to go, you should go to San Sebastian and Bilbao. And I mean, in general, north of Spain, because Spain is not just Barcelona and Madrid, trust me. There are so many beautiful places out there that no one like speak about, but they exist and they're just amazing. Last semester, um, uh, half of the semester, we uh, were looking either... Okay, if you had an EU passport, then uh, you could choose and go to non-European universities, which was Mexico which was Pune in India, which was uh, Indiana in US, Osaka, Osaka in Japan. But of course, since I don't have an EU passport, um, I couldn't choose this option. For those who didn't have passport, we could either uh, go to the research track in one of the universities, in one of the eight universities, but actually not, it was actually 
I think it was four because for example in Spain the research track was in Spanish in uh, France it was in French so at the end it was just like four universities that you can go and do the research track so they basically teach you how to do research but uh, since I knew already how to make a research since I studied sociology I was like nah I will do an internship so it was a big struggle I was trying to find an internship in in Sweden I applied for like five or six in Stockholm only one like replied and it was a negative answer and uh, I applied also in Karlskrona city and I got accepted I was working in the international office in um, technology university Blekinge International Technology University or something like that Blekinge Techniska Hochschule and I was preparing an international day after internship that was an amazing semester I met amazing people there even though I was not a student so the last semester was I was writing my thesis and uh, my thesis again was about Azerbaijan my lovely Azerbaijan <laughs> now I will explain why I said that I don't have a specialization because as you understood already Master of Arts in Euro culture doesn't say thing who I am but basically who I am is the specialized person uh, in EU or in yeah in EU I would say not in Europe I can work in um, European uh, Union institutions such as uh, European Commission Parliament or you know all of these institutions that are in Brussels uh, but first of all, I don't want to live in Brussels, that's first. And the second of all, the problem is that people who have non-EU passports, they cannot work in this kind of institutions. At least, okay, um, maybe in some of them you can, but if you want to work in the parliament, because I was actually thinking about working in parliament because uh, this is more interesting than others uh, other institutions for me but yeah I don't have a European passport and I'm not allowed okay this is sarcasm it's not nice and I was really mad during this whole program that I cannot even work in the field I want after I graduate now I changed my mind I don't want to work anymore in the European Parliament uh, in the EU Parliament and I don't want to be um, connected with all of this and I don't want to be close to any politics and uh, if you're wondering with what I want to work uh, then I will just basically answer that I want to work with event organizing I just love like this organizational part like planning stage and then the operation stage I think that was it for my education trip so bachelors uh, one bachelor in Azerbaijan and actually I finished my second bachelor in 2015 summer 2015 so i have a diploma from chemistry engineering i have diploma from development studies major in sociology minor in economic history and gender studies and i have masters uh from both universities deusto university spain university and Uppsala university and the master is euro culture uh, master of arts in euro culture I think that was it. I'm really sorry for long video, but I <laughs> I really didn't want to separate the question from university from all of the small questions that you asked. If you have more questions uh, about my university, about anything that I was answering beforehand, um, let me know under this video and I will do with pleasure another Q&A for you because you know that I really love it I really love to talk but uh, since the video was too long I will just say bye to you I love you guys so 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 much thank you guys for watching this video if you're watching it until the end I will be so so happy and yeah and I will see you in the next videos bye